The final thing I'm going to look at is just adding a look to all of your clips. So the way that you should approach grading is you take your clips on the timeline. You then make them all look like they've got the same color. So generally you neutralize it so that they're all at a decent white balance, same kind of brightness, and everything looks uniform. And then if you want to add some kind of look to it, particularly the kind of look where the shadows are kind of bluey greeny and the faces are a bit more yellow, which is very popular these days on TV, then you add the look after making them all look the same. Now, what you could do is you could add the look to each of these clips individually but that's going to be a real pain if you need to change it later on. So what I like to do is I like to take my timeline and then stick it inside another timeline and apply the effect to that. It'll probably make more sense if I do it. So I've got like, four different clips here that I've been fiddling with, with different types of grading on them, and I want to apply the same look to all of them. So what I'll do is I'll make up a new sequence. I'll go and find that sequence in the bin. It's uh, sequence Two. Really would have helped if I'd named these things sensibly. Let's double right click on that and call it something. I'm going to go to sequence four and drop that in it. So now all those clips are nested and they're one thing and I can take a primary color corrector. Let's make the shadows a bit bluer and the midtones a bit more orange maybe. And you've got the same look applied to the lot. Or maybe if I've got it, I can go to my Vitacene effects. Put that on there, open it up. Let's go through the film looks. You see there, I could just choose one of their presets or I could make my own up. So let's say just choose white diffusion and blow out the whites of it maybe. That effect is now applied to all of those clips. Or maybe I've got a LUT, which is from somebody else that I particularly want to use. Just take the primary color corrector, put it on there. Let's add in whatever the LUT is. So obviously I've got lots of LUTs which come with it, but I've downloaded one from somewhere else and I want to add it in. So I'm just going to click on the little cog, choose import, find my LUT. I added it in, chosen it, and now you can see I've got that same kind of look going through all of them. Probably a bit too intense though, because obviously I've got my bluey blacks and I've got my orange faces, but I think it's a bit too much. So actually what I'm going to do is take that off and I am going to stick on a mask filter. Open it up. I'm going to put a mask over everything and I'm going to say inside that mask, let me use the primary color corrector with that LUT on it. But I'm going to vary the strength just by changing the percentage here. That's no effect. That's a bit of an effect. That's 100%. And I can vary how much I want that to be applied. So if somebody gives you a LUT from something, you can load it up and vary the amount just by doing that. But I would nest the sequence so that what you end up with is it affects all the clips. So my favorite way of nesting is to put a keyboard shortcut on something which hasn't normally got a keyboard shortcut. I did mention this in my video about making me tutorials, but you come up to the keyboard shortcuts here, you look for stuff with sequences in there, you apply a keyboard shortcut to this, convert in, out to sequence. I've chosen that shift and S will choose this. This hasn't got anything applied to it. You can't get to it in any other way. If this isn't assigned, you can't do anything with it. But if you do that and then just mark an in and an out point around your sequence and use your keyboard shortcut, it actually nests all that lot into here. And then I can apply my look directly to it. What I'm going to do is go and grab it from the other thing here. So I want to grab that mask filter. Now to get that mask filter from this clip to the other one, you'd think you could just copy and paste it, but that doesn't work. So what I tend to do is I'll take that, I'll save it as a preset, go to my other sequence, and then just drop it on there. I can always delete the preset later on, but at least that's made me able to copy effects between sequences. Because I've got this edit up here, it completely ignores the things underneath it. So I could even now delete those. But when you do this nesting thing, the sound doesn't go with it. So now I've deleted the sound. But I just tend to do that, nest it, put it on there, job done. If I don't like my original grade, like on my head here, I can see the edge there. It's still see that fuzzy edge or I want to get rid of this red screen. I can always pop into this sequence, grab hold of it, and then get rid of the bits I don't want. So let's just turn off that red one there. Go back to this edit and my looks applied to it, but the original has now changed. But that's how I'd apply a look to an entire sequence. That's a few reasonably quick tips to grading inside of Edius. Hopefully doing a few things that you weren't aware that you could do. 
I've obviously got a lot more in my tutorial where I've recently updated the entire effects section. So it talks about that. It talks about things like using the chrominance filter to get better chroma keys out of your clips, things like that. And there's a lot more on scopes and everything else and also the basics of it. If you want to learn more about the tutorial, visit my website www.dvctraining.co.uk where you can also order EDIUS 9 and EDIUS upgrades from previous versions as well as my tutorial. You can always contact me, david at dvctraining.co.uk. I also offer support on EDIUS, which I can do by remote control or over the phone and advice on buying new systems. So get in contact if you're interested in any of that. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos.